Good morning. Are we live? Are we here? It's a little early. I always get to the party a little bit early because I want to make sure that everybody's everybody's sitting down comfortably and they've got their cup of tea or coffee. Early morning coffee's good. Um, can you hear me okay? Is the volume acceptable to you? Good morning from the Shack Shack. Let's just just spend a couple of minutes waiting for everybody to arrive. I'm just waiting for a sign. There you go. And off we go. Good morning. I'm always glad, always gladdened to see. There we go. Morning, morning, morning from Peterborough. And here, here we go. It's always a relief. While we're waiting for everybody to come in, come on in, come on in, grab a seat. Up the front, early bird catches the worm. It's always a pleasure uh, nowadays to, to be here at 10 o'clock. I don't know about you, but it really, really helps me. As soon as I wake up, I haven't got time to, to let my mind wander, you understand? I just know I have to be here and I have to put my face on and I have to decide what I'm wearing. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a different outfit every day, it's because I've got no other reason to get dressed up except to spend a happy hour with you and, and I might as well get dolled up for the occasion. And also, I have to say, if I wear a different outfit, then I remember when I'm looking at the different YouTubes, I know from my outfit usually what I was doing on a particular day. And there's another good reason so that we don't duplicate. But eventually, from what I'm gathering, we're gonna be here together in the Shack Shack for a little while longer. And so I may have to resort to wearing the same top twice. <laughs> Hopefully just twice, not three times. Anyway, good morning. How are, how are you? 9.57. Let's get everybody in the building first. Front seats are taken now. Loads of room for everybody. There's as much space as you need. You can spread out, bit of social distancing. Get your paper, get your pen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to have your company. Nice to have your company. And I really mean that. That's not just, I'm really relieved that we're meeting every day. Whew. Yes, I am. So, let's see. What time is it now? Is it nearly ready to go? 9.58, 9.58, two more minutes, and then we can officially say, welcome to the Shack Shack. Right, so, let's see, where are we? Are we having a bit of limbering, stretching? Oh, yeah. What a game, eh? This is unbelievable. Hmm. But you know, we just have to take it one day at a time, don't we? One day at a time. Sometimes, if that's too much, one hour at a time. You know that? You know? If you wake up and you've got a hornet's nest going on in your head and it's going crazy and the wasps are buzzing and everything and the old washing machine head is going and you're panicking because, trust me, you're not alone, you know? It comes on me like, oh, I wake up at five in the morning and I think, here we go. Just sheer terror. And, you know, it passes. It passes. You just got to get right down to the moment and then and stop forecasting, stop worrying about what we can't control. And I think that's half the reason that we panic, isn't it? Because we we can't we can't do anything about it except stay home and craft. Shack. 9.59. Yeah, and you know, for this little hour that we get together, what is working, what's happening with me, good morning everybody, come on in. What's happening with me is that it's giving me a wonderful routine and I'm figuring out the, the longer this is going on, the more essential my daily routine is becoming to me. I don't know if that's the same for you, but I, I'm, it's almost robotic now. So I get up, I do this, I do this, I have my breakfast, I take my vitamins, I have my second coffee. It's, I'm really, you know, routine. It's, it seems to be the way forward. And uh, same as yesterday, we were talking about how um, 
everybody's starting to to order there you go what do you think we're selling loads of apart from coloring postcards folders storage folders everybody starting to take the time now all those groovy plates and stamps that were everywhere now we're filing them same as we're filing our i filed all my underwear drawers all my socks or everything's folded nicely and it's almost like you need to be able to control the controllable doesn't it feel like that mm. so and this doodling is great because it just means we can all get together good morning everybody come on in lovely clarity friends uh, we can all get together and we just put everything to the side that's been troubling us just it won't go not going anywhere just leave it. It may look a little bit different when you've cleared your mind a bit. Okay, so let's have a look. Have a sip of tea and then we'll start, shall we? I bet we're, yeah, 10.01. Ready to go? Mmm. Cup of tea. Can't be a good cup of tea out of bone china. Hey? Right. Now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good people. It's lovely to have your company. Uh, welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. It's getting really important, isn't it? And the longer this goes on, how lucky are we that we that we have this? How lucky are we? And all you need is a pen and a piece of paper. And as crafters, we've got a room full of stash that we can use too, haven't we? So yesterday, should we get started? Stop waffling, Gray. Yesterday, we looked at um, a balloon. Do you remember? And and I know that many of you you were struggling with the shape. And um, you know, we started with a heart. Do you remember? We started with a heart. Then we rounded off the top. You can go back, rounded off the top, and then we came down here. And then we went like that, and we went like that, and then we just brought it down a little bit further, and there's your balloon, like so, right? There you go, another little balloon. See, and then we just put a gondola on it today, and then we did our patterns, which we're going to do in a minute. So I just wanted to show you that it's it's not about perfection. It's not about perfection. It's about progress and the more you do the better you'll get you know and if you don't it it really is I, I wanted to show you something I wanted to show you something right imagine and I will say it soon imagine we're going to draw an elephant and you'll all go you must be joking I can't even do a hot air balloon what does she think I am I can't do it. David Hockney well let me show you something so you remember I showed you the beautiful bee mug from Art House Meath yesterday. Well, today I thought I'd showcase the elephant mug. Let's have a look at this. It's superb. Right, now check out, let the, let the focus start. Right, now look at these elephants. Okay, look. They are absolutely superb. This is a big shout out for Art House Meath. Look, a not-for-profit enterprise celebrating <coughs> excuse me the talents of adults living with severe epilepsy and hang on sorry i'm not very good at this and learning difficulties right have a check it out art house meath fine bone china made in england right now look at these elephants Talk about doodleology. Look at that. Isn't that superb? Now, you may say, but they don't look like elephants. And I would argue they are brilliant elephants. Absolutely brilliant elephants. Look at that. Right? So, my point is that it isn't about the fact that it has to look perfectly like a balloon that you would see in the sky. It has to look like your interpretation of a balloon. It's what you want it to be. This is absolutely glorious, this elephant mug, isn't it? So I think we have to learn to let go of that perfectionism. It's progress. 
And when you let go is when your, your progress will take flight, all right? That's when you'll really, you'll, you'll get so good because you won't be worrying about being judged or whether it's right or it's wrong or it's black or it's white or it's good or it's bad. Forget it. Okay? Right. End of sermon. Starting the doodle. I know. We've, we've been together so many years, so many of us, haven't we? And this has always been our thing about being perfect. It's always got to be perfect, hasn't it? And, uh, and if it's not perfect, it's rubbish. Well, let's say, let's just agree that it, if it looks a little bit, even if it wouldn't take off, what we're actually doing is learning this lovely pattern and we're getting out of our heads and we're getting with our hands. Right, are you ready now? So yesterday we did this doodle and I also, I, I, um, I took on board what somebody on Facebook did because they didn't, they weren't happy with the dots. See on my one here, I put dots in here and then somebody said they weren't happy with that because they, well, or they had made their balloon so small that they couldn't get the dots in to look good. See? And so, so I thought, right, well, there you go. Looks just as nice in black, you see? So I did that bit in black. Choices, choices, choices. And so what we're gonna do now, let's go back to the original. Now we're gonna do the really lovely twirly, let's do this pattern. This is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do this pattern. Then we're gonna do a little bit of clever shading, which is what gives it that depth. It's lovely, I love it, the shading's easy. So we'll do that. Then we'll have a look at the gondola where everybody sits. So we're gonna draw in a gondola. Now, check out the weave, the basket weave. See how close I can, it's gonna go a bit fuzzy now until it focuses, there. See the little basket weave? Well, obviously this is a little bit on the small side, but I thought it'd be really cool if we actually do a nice basket weave. So we get the theory down, because that is what I put in the gondola, but in tiny, tiny. So. I thought we'd have a doodle doing that. It's a nice pattern. It's an optical illusion. Right. So I think it's good that we know where we're headed. Agree? So what I want to do now is take my... Let's go to this camera here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop in. First of all, we're going to put another row of, of double line here. Are you sitting comfortably? Have you got your pencil? Is it sharp? Are you ready to rock and roll? So what we want is this one here, these two lines, okay? So we can make it so it goes like that and then it come around there like that, that'll do. Let go of the perfectionism. It's not doing you any favors at all. Right, there you go, nice. That'll do. <laughs> that wasn't too hard, was it? Actually, do you know, I put some cream on my hands because my hands from all this washing, 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 they're like old elephant skin. And so I put some cream on and now they're all greasy. <laughs> Typical. So what we're going to do is repeat these zigzags here. So we're going to start here, right? And we're going to go from there to there. So down we go, right, like that. And then we'll go like that, like that. Like that, like that. And then we're going to come up to that one and down again. This is going to be quite tight because I've got more, I've got more pleats on this one than I had on my original one. That'd be all right though. Right, so then we're going to do that. And then I think, because I've got more room up that, that side, now I'm going to decide where have I got more space to do a double line? Let's have a look. So for example, in this one here, I've definitely got more space on that side. And we're gonna use our pencil, aren't we? Because we wanna make sure that we're in the right place first, don't we? Yes, mum. <laughs> right, so we'll get our doodle in. That's a bit fat, never mind. Are you doodling with me? There you go. Marvellous. That one's a little bit tight, but do you know what? It's what it is. Okay, so now we've got those in place. That's these ones. Yeah, now we're gonna put these in place. 
So these are a piece of cake. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a quick look so you can see. So on the up, let's just concentrate on these two. So you're going to do a little flower at the top and then you're going to weave it around the bottom like that. Let's do it in, let's do it with um, a pencil first. Let me come in. God, I can't get this right. Right, so I'm going to go middle flower. You'll love this. This is like back to what we love doing best. Flowers. Right, and then we're going to come round here and we're just going to make a curl. See? So then in this side, it's going to look a bit different to the original one. Flower, three petals, and then we're going to come around here. You can put your doodle where you like. Look, there you go. Curl. So, fleur, 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 and then doodle. It's a long one, this. It's all right. Just remember, it is the journey, not the destination. There you go. One, two, three. And then on the other side of the double line, this is quite nice. Everyone's original. But I think it's, you know, it's a good idea to just doodle in pencil first, especially with these more complicated things, don't you? It's supposed to be relaxing. <laughs> there you go, doodle. So you're always putting the flower in the open space and then we're dragging down that. There you go. One more. Fleur, fleur, fleur. And then down it comes like that. Oh, sorry, I keep wandering over there. There you go. So let's have a look at this. And you could see now, that would look nice. Shall we pen it? Come on, once we've done it, let's see how everybody's catching up. And while everybody's catching up, what pen or pencil is Barbara using? She's using the Micron pens in a minute. And pencil is just an HB, just an HB pencil. Um, just a bog standard HB pencil. OK, I've got other ones. I've got 5B, which is a really soft pencil. 5B in B for black, H for hard. See, that's a hard one. Where is it? H, you see? That one says H. So that's a hard pencil. 5B, really soft. So let me show you, for example, if I use the 5B pencil, let me show you over here. You'll see it's really black, but for black. Right. If I use the H, I mean, a lot of you, I'm teaching you suck eggs here, but you'll see the H. I'm pressing just as hard, but it's harder. So it look, it doesn't matter how hard I, where am I going with this? Right. So it doesn't matter how hard I press. Whereas if I do that with the, with the, the 5B for black, look, see the difference. So that one would be good for smearing, but this one, because it's hard, it won't smear. You see? So they're Faber-Castell ones. I like the Faber-Castell ones. And then as far as the pens go, the Micron pens, what we're using is, I've got a pack here, these ones. These are cool. Um, the Bridge to Art Micron pens. There are seven in a pack. They're good. They're really good. And I'm just using the number one at the moment, which is the one I use for most of my sketching. And then, like I said yesterday, when I was getting in the really detailed tight areas, which I might go to in a minute, um, then I was using the 005. So that's how they work. Right. So now let's pen this, shall we? I'm going to use the 01 to get this in place. And I think I'll start. Let me let me move this over. Let me see if this helps. And right, so now I'm going to I'm going to shuffle over this way a bit. That's better. Right. And I'm going to stay in this area. OK, marvellous. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to pop this one in. Round we go like that. OK. And then same again, go slowly. If you go from look. Area to area like that, it's like one thing at a time you'll find it a lot less stressful than trying to go all the way around. Yeah? 
And then what we'll do is, I, I like starting in the middle, and then bearing in mind that what we want to do eventually is we want to put little dots inside. See the little dots? So if you want to do that, you've got to leave at least enough room to get a little dot in. This is where these pens come into their own, isn't it? So we're going to go down like that. Slowly does it. Down like that. And if you don't leave enough room for a dot, you know that when I say that, you know I didn't. <laughs> I can't impress on you enough how important it is to not judge your work and worry about whether it's a brilliant balloon or not a brilliant balloon. This is just about Relaxing into the doodle. There you go. Just relax into the doodle. And the more you let go, right, and just enjoy what you're doing, just enjoy the process. The more you do that, what you'll find is it will actually, your, your, your work will improve. It will. It's the strangest thing. By not worrying about it, you're letting go of, of these preconceptions that you've got. You've got a preconception of what you want your work to look like. And you've got to get, you've got to get a shot of that. Get rid of that. Just, uh, just doodle. Yeah. Can you hear me clock ticking? So once we've done that, how are we doing for time? Cool. Once we've done that, we'll put the flowers in. So again, one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm going to put them all in first and then I'll go back and do the tails. Oh, that went a bit dodgy. One, two, three. Where are you? Where where are you? I know you're in your room. Where are you? We're in the south of England. We're um, in a little town called Crowborough, which is south of Tunbridge Wells, and it be on the road to Brighton, if that's if that's familiar. And um, I'm in my my shack above the garage, my shack shack. And uh, I spend a lot of time up here, but it's safe. I'm, I'm okay. I find when I get into my craft and I just start doodling like this, I forget the world. I think that's why so many of us do craft, don't we? Just forget everything. Maybe some people think that this is a bit too childish doodling, you know. And I'd say I disagree with that. I think it's brilliant. Each to his own and all that. There you go. So I've done my, done my doodle doodles looking good and I'm going to put a little dot I'm going to make that a little bit bigger here where the it's just a little feature and it's the little things that give me pleasure there you go how's your doodling coming along let me I'll up invite you to catch up how's it going is your balloon pleasing to you yet does it look like a balloon it's about the patterns. It's about the patterns on the blue. I was actually thinking yesterday that maybe I could make a stencil because we make stencils, don't we? And I was thinking I could make a stencil like this with balloon shapes in so that you could just then put it down and draw the balloon around, you know, just to get the shape going. And then I thought, why? It's, yeah, if you say that that's what you need, then you know that we will make it for you. But f for the purpose of this adventure, I think it'd be great just to draw a heart and figure out your own interpretation 
of your own balloon. Whether or not you'd get in it and fly away in it is another story. Right, let's have a look. Where are we now? Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to take my, my little pen now. My, my dinky, my um, 005. And I think I'll come in to this. And what I'm going to do is just add a couple of details. See, the, this one is so small that you can actually, this is so fine, this pen. See, the fatter pen, I don't think I could get in here. And if you don't have a fatter pen, just leave this out. Don't worry about this detail. It's not, it's not a design flaw. It's just a different design, isn't it? Okay. But I'm going to just add these in here. Simple. Simple little things. How are we all doing? Do you shout at me when I'm doing this and say, you must be joking? Or slow down or I can't keep up? <laughs> well, the thing is that we record these, don't we? So you can always catch up on YouTube or on Clarity, on the Clarity Stamp uh, Facebook page. They're all recorded, so you can go back, you know, if you've got the children or the grandchildren. And they're getting bored as well, you know, or anxious. And you want to do something with them. This is a really inexpensive, effective way of whiling away an hour and clearing the head. It really is. I already feel better now than I did when I started. There you go. Oh, and while we're there, why don't we... Let's just sort this out as well. Right. We've got this down now. Look, larger. And then as it comes back round, it gets tighter. There you go. So we've done that bit as well now. Right, before we do anything else, before we do anything else, now we've got to rub out all our pencil work because we're going to do, I'd like to do the shading next on the actual balloon because I think we've done all our pattern work. I don't think we need to do any more. You might, you might want to put a couple of dots on the little flowers. We can do that. But for now... I think that'll do with with the with the pattern work, don't you? Less is more, less is more. I mean, you could completely fill it if you felt inclined, but I think we'll stick. I'm going to stick now. So we need our, our rubber, our eraser, and we're just going to take out the the pencil lines, and then you'll see that your work gets a bit clearer. We've got to get rid of the sketch lines before we put in the shadows and the shading. Let me just... So I've got cream all over my hands now, which isn't easy. Right, okay. I'm going to do that. It's a pink eraser. It's a pink one. There's a white one, which is more for ink, right, that we use on parchment. You know, when we're getting rid of the colour on the parchment. And the pink one is the one that gets rid of pencils nicely. So we'll just get rid of all our sketch marks, like so. I'm just going to use a brush just to get rid of... There you go. Okay. Right, are we ready for the next thing? Now we're going to use a pencil and we're going to just add some shadow. I'm, it's the HB one. You could use the real soft one, preferably if you've got loads of pencils. Not an H, you want a B, a B for black at a different level. But I'm, I'm just going to use HB, it's fine. Because it's, it's easy to rub out as well. Let's have a look. How are we doing? Hillingdon, hello Carol. Nice to see you. Nice to have your company. Bromsgrove. What's the weather like there today? It's a little bit overcast here today. Not rainy, just, just a little bit overcast. So I'll tell you where we're going to get the best result first, right, which is really cool. Have a look here. You see in this bit here, look there, this is where we're going to put a shadow. There, there, there. Let's do these on this side and then we'll go back and do the other side so we're not flicking backwards and forwards. So you see you do... 
that on there like that that one on there like that that one on there like that see now what you're doing here because you're doing it on the same side every time it m makes it look like the it's like the the lights coming from here do you see so you can get more shade on that side that's quite cool isn't it like that see so we'll just do it on that side okay if you've overcook it then all you need to do is take your pink rubber your pink eraser and just go work your way back into it you look if you don't like it at all you take it right out and then go again if you like but what have we been saying we're not going to get hung up on this are we there you go right so that's the first thing that's an impressive shade and then we're going to go let's go down here on this side let's go on this side now here and just gently go down the whole thing as that whole line to get to there and if you let me show you a little shading trick see if you go that way then what you're doing is if I come over here what you're doing is is that isn't it right it's like hatching so you're going in that direction, right? Always in the same, let's, let me exaggerate that, right? So that's what we're doing. And then this, I don't want you to do it that hard, but then if you cross hatch, you go in the other direction. So you cut across like so. And that's when you get, see? So what you're doing is that, but in much smaller, so much finer. So I'm going, I'm going, let me just show you. I'm going up, 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 up. See, I'm flicking up all the time flicking up like so and because I'm, I'm starting on the line and as I'm flicking there you go it's it's lighter it's darker on the line right but then it you flick up and then if you want to cross hatch it's so that's hatching now if you want to cross hatch you go back the other way so all I've done is turn the work around and what you'll see is now it's nice because because a balloon would be made of a, a material as well, so this would actually give you a quite a nice texture. See, so here, so we're hatching and then we're cross hatching. I mean, what do I know? I've only got a level art. I make it up as I go along. <laughs> but there you go. It keeps me sane. Keeps me safe. See? So when you actually, when you look from the top, you can see how you can get the shadow. And then if you want to make it f finer here, see, you can use the flat of the, the pencil as well. See how? Look, just using the side of the pencil. So, for example, if you want it to come out a bit further, then all you've got to do is use the flat of the pencil. There, and then you can graduate it really nicely. See? So that's a, actually a quicker way to go. So let's try this one. Let's see if this one... We've got to make sure that we're on the right line, though. That's that one there, isn't it? So we're going to... See, in a minute, not in a minute, but say next week, when we start looking at colouring pencils, these are all the, the shading tricks that will come into their own. See, so you can use the flat of the pencil. You can do your cross hatching. You, you know, you can... Look, there you go. Make a really nice shading trick, isn't it? And because I'm using quite a soft pencil, I can actually, even my HP is soft. Different makes, different softnesses, you know? But you see how you can get your shadow. So start where the pattern is, and then up you go. So it's up to you. You use the flat, use the cross hatch, use little circular motions. The trick is to be darker near the line and then lighter as you get away there you go that's about the sum of it really so you can go in there you can do that later and then this one as well just make sure you're on the right line and stay on this side of the line so that way you get the illusion of the light coming in from there don't you so how are we doing half past already so we got the shadow we cool with that there you go 
And if you're new to this and you think, oh, there's a lot of fuss about shading. <laughs> it's the process. It's the process. It's the focus. And it's nice when you get it, when it, when it comes out and you, you like what you've done. It's pleasing. There you go. And if you overcook it, see the rubber, the eraser, um, is really good for toning it down afterwards. If you think you've done too much, you can go back in and lighten it up a bit. There you go. So you put it all on, wax on, <laughs> wax on, wax off. <laughs> so that's the shading. That's the shading. And perhaps when our doodle session is over, you could go through and add your shading to the rest of the balloon. Let's have a look at the finished one. I'll, I'll put a picture of this finished one up. You'll see actually when you look at mine up close, you'll see that there's more shading around the sides than there is in the center. And it gives you that feeling of that three dimensional feeling, doesn't it? Straightforward. Straightforward. Right, so that's that. We've done the balloon. Well, we've done the the hot air part of the balloon. And now we're going to do the gondola. The gondola. Shall we do it? Come on then. Right, so the gondola is where where the, the people sit, right, where where you hang out. Have you seen that film? There's a film on at the moment. We watched it. It's very, very good. Um, right, so, and it's all about a hot air balloon and a couple in the hot air balloon. It's very good. And they... Um, it's based on a true story, apparently. Right, so let's have a look at this gondola. And what we're going to do is draw... Right, so let's have a look. What we're going to do is, first of all, we need some sort of... Let's just call... Let's just put something here in pencil. This is where the heat comes out of. So we'll, we'll put that like so. I, I, I haven't studied this, so I don't know what it looks like. But what's more important is that we're going to put a gondola in. Now, a gondola, if we... Let's imagine... Let's do a V like that. Let's just do a V like that. Let's do quite a big one. Let's just pretend. It's quite big. It's a touristy one. There's 12 people getting in this. 200 drachmas each. Right, so you've got, there's no social distancing in this gondola, okay? Right, so now we're going to go like that. So put your V, like a Chinaman's hat, like that. Then do the side and do that. Right, and this is going to be the frame. See that? Right, we'll go from on top so you can see it. Right, so now we've got that. That will help a lot now with our, let's make a, yeah, it'd be quite big, but that's all right. It's a big one. You're going to knock your head on the on the. End. You're going to burn your hair on this one. But it's all right. In the name of art, this is all cool. Okay. So then, what we're going to do is make the 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 basket. So this is quite a deep one. So the kids can't even see out the top, but they've got little little chairs to stand on. Okay. <laughs> right, and then we're going for the base. So base, same look. Perpendicular, it's a long word. Look, same place. And then this one, we're going to come in here and we can... It's all about perspective. So you've got that line and that line. They run parallel. Then you come down a little bit, make it a nice weavy basket. And then this one is the same as that one. And then that one, you're just going to have to figure it out for yourself so it looks about right. Yeah? Uh, I think it probably would come over a little bit flatter like that. That's why we use a pencil when we do. That'll do though. Look, and then as far as the, the rope bit goes, right, let's just have a look. It's going to come round and it's going to catch it like that. That'll do. Look, and then there's two round the back, isn't there? So we're going to have to come round the back like that with another two bits of rope to hang it on. And then there's one at the front as well, just so that it just so it doesn't tip over because you won't want to be standing in this corner unless it's attached there, there and there, right? Are we agreed? Are we in agreement? You would um, shotgun this corner. <laughs> okay. Are we happy? Uh, have we all left the building? Let me just check while you're catching up with your masterpiece. Let me just see who's here. There's no such thing as practice makes you perfect. Practice makes you better. Absolutely wonderful. From a beautiful sunny North Devon. Yes, we seek progress, not perfection. I absolutely concur with you on that one. 
Right, so we've done that. And then what we could do is on the inside, just because we can now, we could put a little, look, like a little recess so it actually looks, see? If we look at my, my original one, let's go up tight so we can see it. Right. Uh, right, see the little recess? And then it's just a little cross hatch, isn't it? Okay. So how are we doing for time? Oh, we got loads of time. So what I want to do is ink, once you're happy, I'm going to use the number one pen for this. Once you're happy with this, let's just get this in, shall we? So I'm going to, I'm going to just put the rope in. I'll work out how we're going to do that in a minute. Right. And then we'll bring this rope down here like so. So that's going in there. And then that's, I'll, I'll just, I'll attach it to something. Right. And then this will come down like so as well. There you go. That'll do. And then this one's coming round the back to hang on to the other two. Because they're going to definitely be round. The... I've got one, two, three. So there's five on this one. <laughs> it's all right. You definitely want to be on the other side where there's more support. Right, round we come. Like that. And then, when we've done that, right, let's just get this in place. How are we doing? And then, what we'll do is, we'll do this bottom bit while we've got it in place. We can just do that while we're here, can't we? We've got the pen in our hands. So we do the lines like that. And then we'll turn it round and then we'll bring the lines in the other way so that they're, there you go, that'll do. Yeah, there you go, a bit more depth. Hmm? Right, so now we've done that much, and this I'm not sure about, but we'll give it a go. Right, here we go. Look, this is going to be just whatever it is. It's a detail. And those are the little handles, so you can pull it up and down. Right, now, now we're going to have a practice because this is quite small. So I thought, I thought, rather than go straight to task, because it, it wasn't that, that weave at that size, mine's really rinky-dink, it was a little bit of a, a head game. And I thought, well, you know what, if you're struggling with the shape, then I don't want to put you through the little miniature weave without at least knowing how the weave works before you do it, okay? We've got to be gentle. It's all about gentle, isn't it? So we'll, we'll take our sketch away from our, what we did. We'll take our, the, the, the pencil lines away without taking out all our shading, right? So we'll do that. And then, how about we take another bit of paper? Just take this brush. We'll take another piece of paper and we'll practice, I think so, we'll practice a really good doodle. You know, like, here we go. Right, have you got that so far? Are you happy with that? It's quite a big basket, isn't it? You, I don't know how high it will fly with the size of this basket. But like I said, it's a tourist one, room for plenty of people. Right, this is what we want to look at now. And we're going to do this with a pencil. And it's, it's just a simple weave, like a basket weave. But this is, we're going, definitely going to use a pencil. And we'll do it in large. And then underneath, what you could try and do is reduce it to half the size. Okay, so let's just do this, right? So you're going to go, this is such a good pattern to do. Let's just do some lines, freehand. I mean, you can use a ruler if you choose to, but I reckon this would be fine. Let's just do one, two, three, four. Let's do six like that. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll go six the other way. So I'm going to do one. Two, three, four, five, 
six. That one too hard, was it? <laughs> now I'll let you catch up. That's the first thing we've got to do. Let me say hello to, I'm in Greater London. Hi, Judith. Nice to see you. It was going well and now it's freezing. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I think, I think it's going okay, isn't it? I think, am I freezing or am I doing okay? Are we still, are we still on this? I do hope so. Well, I'm going to persevere because it looks to me like it's working okay. It may be a little bit slow, but let's keep going. Right, groovy guard, I'm going to lean on something. And then what we're going to do is pop squares in here. So everywhere where there's an overlap, pop a square in like that. Just do a square. That's it. Just do that. Let's do the middle ones. Okay. I think the thing about these things is any patterns like this, like the one we did in the hot air balloon yesterday, it's about the repetition, isn't it? And and it's also about the, the sequence. It's like the build-up. Where do you start, you know? It's that routine thing that we've been talking about, you know? You get a routine going or you get a sequence going and you know, right, do this first, then I do that, then I do that. This is, you know, I mean, I'm no psychologist, but I do know that this will give you a great sense of, like, uniformity. It's like control. And what I love about it, it was like when we were doing, you know that doodle, this one, when we did this, you know, like line, black, line, black, line, black, line, black, and it calms you down. When you're doing something like that, you're free, you know, you're freewheeling, aren't you? And then when you do something like this, it's just repeat the same thing again and again, and the end result is lovely. And that is like this particular doodle. So what we're going to do is this, right, so we've... We've put a little square over every cross, like that, okay? Let's do all this with pencil first, because then what we're going to do, we'll do the ones coming down. Now, what we're going to do is this. We'll go down that side on that one, then we'll go on the outside, then on the inside, then on the outside, then on the inside. So it's inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Okay. Now, when you look at the one next to it, it's, it's a reflection. So this time you're going on the inside and then the outside. See? So this was inside. This is inside. This is outside. This is outside. Inside. Then on the next one, this is outside. Outside. Inside. Outside. Inside. Outside. So it's going like that. See? Then on this one, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Then on this one, it's the opposite again. So, so you just keep doing a mirror. So on this one, it's the inside, then the outside. You might do, you might do well to talk yourself through this outside, inside. Don't worry if you're talking to yourself. I do it all the time. So now we've done all the vertical ones, you see, like that. And so if you if you look at it like that, that means that this now is the if you if you look at it like that, the best thing to do now to get some real dimension so you know where you're going is to black out. Let's start. Let's just black this one out and you'll get it. If you do this, you'll get it because there's too many lines going on here at the moment. So if you just do this, let's just do one side and you'll get it. So we'll do that box. Let's just colour a few in now. Do a few of these. Right, so we're colouring these boxes in. And what you're doing is, you see, you're colouring in the boxes where the overlaps are. So when you do it smaller, you just make, you, you put the lines closer together and you make the boxes smaller, don't you? And then your weave, that's how you make the weave tighter. So 
So we do this. You could do all these, couldn't you? All these. See, where I had to really think about what I was doing was when I went to... Let me just get these in, in the right place. I had to really think about what I was doing when I started going in the opposite direction with the with the ribbon, with the weave. See, some of us are not wired for that particular... Right, so I've got those, I've got them. I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. I'm um, coming down. How are you doing? Right. So now I've got that in place and I've got that in place and that in place. Right. And now I want to do one more here on this side, because I think if we do a couple, then you'll you'll see the where you've got to go with the next one. It becomes very obvious once you start. Right, so I've got that, I've got that, and I've got that. And then I'm going to put them in, and them in, and that in, and that in, and that in. Right, so what we've got to do now, we've got to decide if that's the... Let's just look at this now. Let's look at this logically. If that's the ribbon coming through here, then now I have to cut it off there. Right? If this is the ribbon coming through there, right, watch this. So now I'm going to cut that through there. And then this is the ribbon. See, have I gone wrong? Yeah, I might have gone wrong. Right, use your pencil. I don't think I've gone wrong. Right, so here we go again. So this is the ribbon coming through here, and it comes through here, and I've gone wrong straight away. So that one needs to go there, see? And then that one goes there, right, and that one goes there. So the ribbon, straight away I went wrong, see? And that's why we use a pencil. But it doesn't matter. It's really of no, no significance. Let's do, let's do this side. So this ribbon here, this is the ribbon, and this is the ribbon. So if I put a bit of shade in there, and a bit of shade in there, that will help a lot. If I put a bit of shade in there, and a bit of shade in there, that will help. Here we go now. Right. So then the, sh so then the shade... Ah, oh, Barbara. So... That's the shade there. Hold on. Let's get rid of these lines here because that's not helping, is it? Let's get rid of them. That will help. Right. Do me a favour. Just get rid of those lines. So you're only looking at now it makes better sense. Right. I apologise for this. Rewind, rewind. Right. So now that's it. The ribbon's coming through there. Right. And then, let me go. So I'll go down there and... Yeah, so that's okay. So my ribbon comes through here, right? And then it, I wasn't wrong. And then it comes there like so. And then my other ribbon's coming through there like that, isn't it? So I was right. It just sometimes, it looks, it looks as if it's wrong, but it's not. There you go. I was right. Right, cross that out. And then it starts to come together. Let's take that one out there. Right, so the weave... So you've got your weave coming through there like that, right? So it comes in there like that. And then this one comes like that, like that, and like that. If you put the... Just take the, the original pencil line out. That will help really a lot. Right, because you've got too many lines going on here. Right, now you can see it. You can see it for what, you look, what you're looking at. So that comes in there. And then we're going to get rid of that one as well. Right, so now this is going to be shadow, isn't it? So it goes in there, comes under there, goes over there. Do you see? Then this one goes in there, over there. This one goes across there, like that. And that one goes there like that. And that one goes there like that. And when you start to colour them in, then it starts to become clear. So in fact, it was right what I did. It just... You know what? Learn it from me that the best thing to do is to take out the original pencil lines because that's where I where it gets confusing. If you just rely on the weave itself, there you go. So imagine trying to do that <laughs> at that size without a little bit of practice. 
How are we doing? So let's have a look. We can do this now. Now it's easy. Once you've got your shadows in place, so there's your weave, it goes under and over and under and over, then it goes over and under and over and under, under, and then we're happy with that. Right, you see? So then, when you, once you're absolutely convinced that the weave is in the right place, then once you put your black lines in, like this, it's completely logical, look. See? And this one's underneath. That one's like that. And then this one's the one that's coming this way. So we're going to go there and there. And it's going underneath. And it's going to go there and there. And then it's going underneath. And it's going to go there and there. And this one's going along there. And it's going underneath. I'll tell you what. If you were worrying about anything else today and you're doing this, you can't even remember what's going on outside, let alone... This, if this doesn't clear your head, I don't know what will. <laughs> See, and this one comes like that, like that. Once you get your eye in, it's actually really easy. See, colour that in. There you go. And that one. There, see? Once you get your eye in, it's all right, isn't it? So you come down like that, down like that, and then here, go like that, I think. Like that. That's it. Because it's the, oh, I, do you know what would be good as well? Silly girl. You could also do that, couldn't you? But I won't confuse you. I'm just saying about outside, inside, outside, inside, see? Then that one goes like outside. But I've got my eye in on this now. I can see what I'm doing. I tell you what, if this doesn't clear the sinuses, nothing will. <laughs> if, you, if you thought that the hot air balloon was a challenge, you want to get your head around this basket weave. And then... <laughs> and then, when you've mastered this, make it half the size and put it in your gondola. Right, here we go. See, what makes it really easy to do is when you put the shadow in. Look, if I put a shadow, it will help if I put a line in there as well. Because it's the lines that make the black obvious, isn't it? So it goes in and under and in and under, in and under and in and under. And then you've got your lovely skills. You know what we were doing with our cross hatching and our shading, right? So you get in there and then you come out like that. And then you get in there and you come out. So this is really tight. There you go. That will work. And then this one as well. And then it goes in under there as well. It's quite a thick weave, this, isn't it? Look. So if you did it with different colours, it'd probably be easier as well. There you go. So you put your shadows in. See? It's all right once you get your eye in. Just for a minute there, I nearly lost it. You, do you know when you suddenly think, oh, no, what, how many lines have I got going on here? <laughs> there you go. I love it. I blooming love this. This is, this is up there with that one that we did the other day. For me, this is absolutely, like once you crack it, this is up there for me with this one. It's so lovely to do, look. Yeah, and then, like now, I've put it in a box. This is going to be so pretty when it's completed. And then I put a black frame around it. And do you know what I might do? I may even make a white border, like finish this off, do the weave, then, uh, then take this one and put it like a little bit, leave a space so there's a little bit of a space around the outside, like that, and then put this one beyond that one as a kind of a, a proper doodle. Doesn't have any any shape or anything it's just a proper pattern isn't it yeah i like that i like that so um hopefully i didn't hang on let's go to that camera
it's all good fun. I tell you what, I can't remember what I was worried about earlier on. All I'm, all I'm thinking about is this basket weave now. So you see, it works. It works. It really does. It really does. That cleared my head. So I hope you enjoyed our doodle. A whole hour. Where did that hour go again? So we've got our, just to recap, so that you know what you're doing. We've done our basket. We've done our gondola. You're going to practice your weave. Then you're going to reduce the size of your weave. And you know what? See if you can add your, your basket weave into your gondola. Now there's a challenge. You'll be wishing you'd made this bigger. <laughs> but the whole idea is just beautiful patterns, beautiful doodles, clearing the head, hanging out together in the shack shack. And I think that'll do for today. Um, we're going to post our artwork. You know, we all gather over on um, Clarity Stamp uh, Facebook page uh, or Clarity Worldwide is where everybody's posting their artwork. So, so do come over and show us what you've done. And this isn't a competition. Nobody's being judged. There are no experts in this building, as I just showed you, you know. It's just, a, it's just a learning curve. It's a doodling session. And all you've got to do is p -p pick up a pen. So, uh, so I'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And, uh, and I'll have something nice for us to do tomorrow. But your homework, if I may give you homework, is to, is to figure out that weave, put it in the little basket, and then perhaps tomorrow we could add a little landscape. We're good at those. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Be safe, be happy, be creative. Bye-bye now. And now I gotta switch it up.